Hey guys this is Hirasaki. This story is all about what if Naruto was in Justice League. Eh, for decades, he had traveled from one corner of the known universe to the other, searching for a way back to his home planet. But after nearly 100 years of fruitless efforts, even with his legendary stubbornness, Naruto grew weary. Now, he had to let it go. Before we start kindly like and subscribe to this channel, and look over the description box for the author of this amazing storyline. Welcome aboard. Chapter 13 Crisis I You can't be serious. A tall and athletic woman said angrily and slapped the table with her palm. But, without meaning to, she put too much strength into it, and the long and luxurious conference table was smashed to bits making everyone else back away startled. Your reaction just now proves my point, Superman said. I don't know what happened, but there is clearly something wrong with you. Over the past two weeks, you've been distracted, made mistakes you wouldn't make normally, and you've become very quick to anger too. Today you broke the arm of that robber, and then lassoed him and dragged him on the ground to the police station. Now that was funny. It was like a scene out of a Wild West movie. Flash piped up and laughed, but he was the only one laughing. Noticing the glares everyone was directed at him, he swiftly shut up. Until you get a, get a grip of yourself, it's best you take a break. I don't want you hurting someone for real or worse. Superman said. Green Lantern also added. You're not in control of your emotions, princess. Losing control in the field could spell disaster both for us and for other people. Superman is right. Take some time and rest. Besides, someone has to stay behind and keep an eye on the alien mercenary and his fox. Martian Manhunter suddenly called them from the control room of the watchtower. Everyone, Lex Luthor is on the move. He had stolen valuable pieces of technology from Star Labs. We have to move fast and intercept him. At the Martian's call, everyone rushed out of the conference room except for Wonder Woman. She let herself drop on the chair, and with her elbows on her knees, she buried her face in her palms. She let out a deep sigh. Out of habit, an exclamation came out of her mouth. Great Hera! But after realizing what she said she gnashed her teeth and, standing up, she kicked her chair into the opposite side of the room. Ah, I see. Anger management issues. A deep voice was heard from the entrance of the room and a chortle followed. Turning around, she saw a small fox cub in the doorway with his fluffy nine tails wagging lazily behind him. She pinched the bridge of her nose and took in a deep breath before exhaling out loud attempting to calm herself down. Just then, a man in a wheelchair came from behind and picked the fox cub from the scruff of his neck as if he was a cat and put him in his lap. Don't tease the poor girl, Karama. It was Naruto. A bit over three weeks passed since the Psion's annihilation and by now, with Dr. Fate's help, all the infected natural energy had been expelled from his chakra pool and his body had reverted to, nor to normal. He was only left with a temporary feeling of weakness. In his books, he considered himself fine nothing that a few dozen bowls of ramen could not fix, but the sorcerer insisted that he did not do any effort for a few more days, not even walking until he fully recovered. Is there something you need? Wonder Woman said stiffly. I was on my way to grab some food from the kitchen for Karama when I heard you guys arguing. Problems in paradise? They grounded her, QB said and snickered like a hyena. Naughty girls get sent to their rooms. Naruto involuntarily sniggered too, but he quickly tried to mask it with a fake cough when he saw the woman's eyes almost spewing fire from how hard she was glaring. Why? What did you do? Seeing her refusing to answer, Naruto shrugged and turned his wheelchair around. Oh well. If you want to talk, I can lend you an ear while Karama eats. Not waiting to hear her reply, he pushed his wheelchair out of the conference room and headed towards the elevator. He was halfway there when he felt someone push his wheelchair from behind. He let his head back and looked up to see who it was, but it was not possible to see their face due to the large pair of breasts obscuring his view. 
Nonetheless, it became clear to him who that was. Wow. They're so much bigger up close. Was his first honest thought. But his eyes did not linger for more than two seconds, because he practically felt QB starting to grin under his whiskers. He did not want the fox to do a repeat of what he had done after the incident with the Queen of Almorac, Maxima. He had laughed at him even after months from that incident. Ridiculously loud sounds of chewing and swallowing were coming from a tiny fox as he gorged himself with food. If in the elemental nations Kyubi could be described with one of the seven deadly sins it would have been the sin of wrath. In the present however, nothing fit him better than the sin of gluttony. His stomach was like a bottomless pit. It is amazing how much he can eat no matter how many times I see it, Wonder Woman said, said as a means of getting the conversation started. That's not what you wanted to talk about, was it? At his question, the princess shoulders slouched. It's a long story. I don't know from where to start. Just start from the beginning. Not like I have anything else to do here, he said, and he poured himself a glass of orange juice. Why am I even talking to a stranger about these things? Wonder Woman muttered mostly to herself. You look like you needed someone to talk to and I was bored. But it's up to you, he said easily, and took a big gulp of juice from the glass. Wonder Woman sighed. It started 3,000 years ago when I was born. Sounds of coughing came from Naruto as he choked with his juice, and even the gluttonous fox stopped eating and looked at her instead with wide eyes. Did I hear well or is my translation device broken? Did she just say she's 3,000 years old? Naruto asked Kyubi in the native language of their homeworld. Unlike Naruto, Kyubi did not need a translating device. He could understand any language spoken by intelligent beings in the universe naturally. No, you heard right. I can feel that she isn't lying either. Kyubi also said in amazement. By the void, she's even older than you. Naruto said in disbelief. And I thought Tsunade was a granny posing as a young woman when she was only in her fifties, but this girl, no, this woman is a grand grand many times grandmother dash. He did not finish his words because Wonder Woman suddenly grabbed him from the collar of his sweatshirt. Do you want to spend the rest of your life in that wheelchair? I'm in danger. Naruto chuckled awkwardly. Karama, a little help? I'm still a patient. Relax, she doesn't have any ill intent, Kyubi said, and went back to eating. Wonder Woman did feel like wanting to smack him once, but when she sensed the killing intent lying dormant inside the fox she wisely decided to let go of Naruto and sat back on her chair. Are you always that short-tempered? Sheesh. Naruto complained as he smoothened the wrinkles on his shirt after she let go of him. Wonder Woman appeared to be distracted by his words. In truth, she was usually nowhere near as impulsive as she had become as of late. Anyway, I was at fault too, he continued. Looks like no matter the planet or race, all women are sensitive about their age. Should have kept my mouth shut, hold up, how did you even know what I was saying? Goddess Athena's blessing allows me to communicate with people regardless of their language. Wonder Woman said and he made an impressed sound. He? That's so convenient. But 3,000 years that's even more than the entire recorded history of my homeworld, it's crazy when I think about it. As someone who's lived for so long, what exactly managed to rattle you that badly? Understanding what Naruto was implying, Wonder Woman shook her head. Although I've lived for so long, I'm not as experienced in life as you think. Until about a year ago, I have lived on the island of paradise, with my Amazon sisters, away from the evils of the world. I didn't go through any problems or difficulties until I came to the man's world. On Themyscira it was different. Just like me, my mother and my fellow Amazon sisters, everyone else was immortal. There were no crimes and any conflicts that we might have had, we solved them in a fair fight on the training grounds. It was paradise. I didn't notice the passing of time the way I do now when I live among regular people. We would spend most of our days training, singing, praying to the gods and... 
she trailed off seemingly at a loss. And? What else? Naruto asked. That's all we did. She said uncomfortably, suddenly becoming aware of how wrong that sounded. That's all you did for three thousand years? Naruto looked at her as if, as if she had grown two heads. He had lived for only around one hundred and ten years, but he had had so many adventures back in his homeworld, and then during his travels as an intergalactic mercenary, that he could fill tens of books with them. I could probably earn a living just from writing novels about my adventures and selling them, he mused. Numerous life and death battles, hilarious moments, embarrassing incidents, the thousands of different places he had seen, the different creatures and races he had encountered and so on. All that, in less than 120 years. Yet someone like Wonder Woman who had lived for over 3,000 years resumed her life experiences in one sentence training, singing and praying? How can someone live such a dull life and not get sick of it? It's freaking 3,000 years. A look of helplessness flashed on Wonder Woman's face. With her intelligence, once she became aware of it, it was not difficult to deduce that the Amazons not noticing the passing of time and them never getting sick and tired of doing the same thing training all over again for thousands of years was not natural. It was because of the gods. A spell must have been cast on Themyscira to make them mindlessly chase just one goal, that of protecting the gates of Tartarus and nothing else. They were like attack dogs trained and locked up to protect a courtyard, never to leave or even think of escaping. I don't know what to think anymore. I don't know what I should do. She said in exhaustion. She had never, never been as confused and mentally exhausted as that before, and that led to moments like the previous scene when her bottled up emotions blew up and she smashed the table in the conference room with a slap. Wonder Woman did not have any real close friends to confide in either. Hawk Girl, the only other woman in the Justice League, was not exactly her biggest fan and the others were men, she was not particularly close to anyone. She could not talk to others about what was tormenting her. Naruto did not have Kyuubi's negative emotion sensing, but he did not need a special skill to understand what she was going through at that moment. Although he had given up on trying to change people and the world a long time ago, his innate gift of connecting with people had never disappeared. Niji Hyuga, Gara of the Sand, Nagato Uzumaki, and even Abito Uchiha they were people that used to hate him and even tried to maim or kill him, but they were all changed by him in the end. Mortal enemies became his best friends and even sacrificed their lives to right their wrongs. Kyuubi often laughed at him when they reminisced their past, saying that his most powerful technique when he was young was not his raisin shuriken, but his talk no jutsu. He had always had the talent of making people open up to him with but a few words. The same thing was happening with Diana in the present too. Despite that he was a stranger, she felt a strong urge to confide her circumstances to him, something that she had not done with even with the rest of the Justice League. The fact that she did not have any close friends did not do her situation any favors either. All my life I believed that I had been sculpted from clay and given life by the gods. Gods. For thousands of years, my faith in them has never wavered. But now dash. Wonder Woman stopped as though she was afraid to continue talking because if she did, her words would be a blasphemy against the gods. Her lower lip trembled, but her teeth sunk into it. Two weeks ago, I found out everything was a lie. I was born like a normal baby, but not in normal circumstances. My mother was raped by the king of the gods I used to worship. And now, his wife, one of the patron goddesses of the Amazons, will try to kill me the moment she finds out her husband cheated on her again. Where is the justice in that? These are the gods I worshipped for thousands of years? I'm fighting to protect the justice in the name of a rapist and a lawless and murderous jealous wife that wants to kill me? She let her back fall on the backrest of her chair. She was not crying, but the defeat and powerlessness in her voice spoke volumes of her feelings. She was exhausted by her inner conflict between the faith she had been raised with and the cruel reality. Three thousand of years of blind faith in the gods could not be so easily erased from her heart despite her rationality speaking up against it. You said you left your paradise island about a year ago, right? 
Why did you leave it? What drove you to come out after three thousand years? Naruto asked. Wonder Woman replied. A race of alien conquerors invaded the earth and almost conquered it. I came out to help everyone to prevent that from happening. Naruto made a humming sound. Did your god send you to do that? He asked. She shook her head in negative. No. Actually, Amazons are forbidden to leave Themyscira. We are bound to guard that place for eternity. He almost smiled at her words. So, you left your home against the will of the gods? It was a rhetorical question so he did not expect her to answer. He continued. You came out, against the will of your gods, to fight against the invaders. Invaders. You didn't do it for the gods or in their name. You did it to protect the innocent. At those words, she raised her head and looked him in the eyes. Despite his rather scary appearance with his beast-like red slit eyes and thick black whisker-like marks on his face, at that moment, Wonder Woman did not feel any apprehension or trepidation when she looked at him. I can't put myself in your shoes. I can't imagine how it is to blindly believe in a god for thousands of years only to find out that he raped your mother. But what I can say is that the most important thing is to stay true to your values. It's not your origins that define you. It's not the gods who decide who you are. Your values and your actions are what define you as a person. Look at your past deeds and ask yourself again, who am I? I trust the answer will be much easier for you to find now. Put me on trials, lock me up but I'll beat it. Watch, I'll be out in days. A bald man said but a green constructive light took the shape of cuffs around his wrists and he was thrown roughly to the ground. Even with the strength of his power suit, he could not break free. Sorry I messed up back there. Flash apologized after Lex Luthor was taken by the police and arrested. Apology accepted, Superman said with a smile. After all, although Flash did make a mistake, it was still him who dismantled Lex Luthor's weapon and beat him down in the end. As soon as the damage is fixed dash. Got a second? Flash said with a smirk and a red blur put everything in the room in order in the blink of an eye. Just then, a yellow portal was opened in the wall of the room a green-skinned humanoid wearing a black suit and a dark blue cloak stepped out of it. Who dash, who are you? Martian Manhunter asked. I'm you, the newcomer replied. He was identical in looks with Martian Manhunter. He proceeded to explain that he was from another dimension and that both of their worlds were facing a crisis. And the dimensions, the dimensions appear to be collapsing on each other. Our Batman built this portal to try to find help. But what can we do? Green Lantern asked. We're not sure yet, the other dimension Martian replied. But my dimension seems to be at the center of it, and that would be the best place to start looking for an answer. While the other Martian was explaining his plan to the rest of the Justice League, Batman secretly asked Martian Manhunter. Have you read his mind yet? Martians don't do that to one another. John Johns answered. Can't? Or won't? Batman asked. Both, he replied. At that moment, Superman asked everyone. So, it's agreed then, we go? Sure, okay. Flash agreed. Right, Hawkgirl said too. What about your dimensions Wonder Woman? The other Martian asked. Wonder Woman is indisposed at the moment. She is temporarily not taking part in the Justice League's activities. Martian Manhunter answered to his counterpart. With everyone's approval, the Justice League followed the other dimension Martian into the portal. As the last two to enter, Batman and Martian Manhunter stopped before stepping through the portal. It might be for the best that Wonder Woman is not together with us, Batman said. Can you send her a telepathic message and inform her of the situation? Why? Do you think they are planning something? Martian Manhunter asked. I don't know. But it's always better to have insurance. Martian Manhunter looked at him blankly. 
Although he thought that Batman was just being his usual self never fully trusting anyone and despite that he did not have any reason to not trust his other self from the other dimension, he still did as Batman asked him and contacted Wonder Woman telepathically. Chapter 14 Crisis 2 I've told you you about Themyscira. What about you? Where do you come from? Wonder Woman asked curiously. After talking to Naruto about the worries and frustration weighing on her, she became noticeably calmer and more relaxed. With fewer things clouding her mind, she was free now to think about other things as well, and that moment looked like the perfect opportunity to find out more about him. Any information she could get in regards to him might prove to be very useful for the Justice League later on. My homeworld revolved around the use of chakra. To put it simply, controlling the elements of nature with magic. Because of that, we called it the Elemental Nations. As for where it is, I don't know. An enemy of mine, because she could not defeat me, pushed me into a dimensional portal. It's been almost 98 years since then. All this time I've been searching for a way back home, but to no avail. I have given up on it, even if I did find a way back home right now, of what use would it be anymore? By now, everyone I've ever known would be dead. What he said was very depressing, but his expression was serene. He had come to terms with it. Almost a century of being obsessed with it was more than enough. Thanks to QB, he had finally let go of it half a year ago. So, your people don't live as long as you do? Most people back in my homeworld were regular humans, just like the ones on Earth. I was not much different when I was born either. It's through years and years of bitter training that regular people could become superhuman back on my planet we called ourselves Shinobi. But Shinobi didn't live long lives. Our world was ridden with wars, four world wars took place in less than eight decades. Heck, just in four years, my nation was invaded two times, and even raised to the ground. Most shinobi didn't pass the age of 60. There was too much war, too much killing. Even so, it was my home. Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman could not mask her surprise. You were an ordinary human too. You mean that everyone can achieve that kind of strength just through training? QB stopped eating at that moment and snorted. HNG, as if. He forgot to say that he is the reincarnation of the son of a god, and that I was his source of power for over 40 years. No regular human could ever reach that level of power. Most shinobi were so weak that I could kill hundreds of them with just a swipe of my tails. Naruto scratched the back of his head and chuckled. He's right. That's also why I look like this, he admitted and gestured to his face. Hard work had was a major reason why he became so powerful, but he could not downplay the importance of his background as a sure as reincarnation or Kyuubi's Jinchuriki either. At that, her eyes were involuntarily drawn to the dark scars on his cheeks and the slit pupils and red irises of his eyes. She was not sure what the fox's words meant exactly, but when she was about to ask another question, Martian Manhunter's voice rang in her mind. Wonder Woman, it's me, John Johns. After we arrested Lex Luthor in Metropolis, a portal appeared and someone that looked just like me came out. It was me from another dimension, similar to ours. Now we're all crossing over to their dimension to help them with their crisis, but Batman thought you ought to know that and stay vigilant. Wait, John. She wanted to ask for more details, but their mental connection was severed because Martian Manhunter and Batman stepped through the portal crossing into the other dimension. She stood up from the table and said. Thank you for listening to my problems. It was of great help for me to talk about it, it made me feel more at peace. But now something urgent came up and I have to go. After saying that, she rushed out of the room. Pushing the wheels with all his strength, Naruto's wheelchair became comically fast, fast enough to even catch up to the running princess from behind. A distracted look appeared on her face when she turned her head around and saw the speeding wheelchair hot on her trail, and she found herself smiling in amusement. But that smile quickly turned into full-blown laughter when she saw a tiny fox also coming from behind running, but with all kinds of meat and other food wrapped into his nine tails. 
Still giggling, she stopped and said. Why are you two following me? You can't be thinking of coming with me. Superman and the others won't let me live it down if I let you leave the watchtower. Oh, come on, what's the worst that could happen? I'm in a wheelchair. It's not you that I'm worried about, she said. But as Wonder Woman's eyes trailed to the nine-tailed fox that was running towards them as fast as his tiny limbs could take him her resistance almost melted. Adorable. She was finding it difficult to imagine that a fox cub as cute and as harmless-looking as that could transform into a half-a-mile-long behemoth and destroy a planet. Finally catching up to them, QB swallowed the remaining food in his jaws and said, Stop worrying over nothing. Even if all of you were together, you'd have no way to stop me if I wanted to do something. We've been cooped up in this satellite for more three weeks. I want to see the world below and get some fresh air. You know, I'm not going down to relax. It's Justice League business. Wonder Woman retorted. You could fight it out and then lose and still do our way. Or you might as well take the chance to strike a friendship with us. At least that's what I would do if I were you. Naruto looked at the fox weirdly. When has QB ever taken the initiative to approach someone just to become friends with them? Naruto had been together with QB for over 100 years, and he had never seen the fo fox offering his friendship to someone other than him while having no ulterior reasons. Mildly amused, he decided to just go with the flow. Surprisingly enough, the stoic princess caved in under the fox persuasion very quickly. Just then, Naruto's red slit eyes happened to meet with Kyuubi's red slit ones too. Having lived together for so long, Naruto could discern every little bit of emotion in the fox's eyes and on his face. How could he have not noticed the shrewd look Kyuubi had thrown his way? What is your mind cooking up this time, Karama? But just like Naruto could read Kyuubi like a book, it went the other way around too. When had Naruto ever talked to someone about his private life or his native homeworld? The answer was almost never. Until then, he had consciously gone out of his way to not become attached to other people, and he avoided personal conversations too. He had only been obsessed with finding a way back home and doing business, his work as a mercenary, in order to support his space travel expeditions. There had been no room for friends or other types of relationships in his life. However, over the last few days, Naruto talked about his past with Dr. Fate and with Wonder Woman too. Seeing Naruto finally start opening up to people, even if just a tiny bit, made Kyuubi happy. And they were not just random people. With his negative emotion sensing, Kyuubi could discern a person's true nature, and he approved of both Dr. Fate and Wonder Woman's characters. Unknowingly, the fox had taken over the role of a father watching over his son. All he wanted now was for Naruto to be happy. When Naruto, QB and Wonder Woman arrived in Metropolis it was already night. But just as they got out of the javelin, a distant boom resounded over the entire traffic of a city of millions. There is trouble. Wonder Woman said please don't do anything to break the law and don't destroy those trackers. You promised. Not waiting for an answer, she took flight urgently towards the place from where the booming noises were coming. Hey wanna want see what's going on? Naruto asked after the princess left. Kyuubi narrowed his eyes at him. Don't give me that look. No way I'm letting you ride on me. Kyuubi barked at him. Why not? You have no issues with it when I'm giving you chakra in return, huh? It's different when I'm the size of a mountain. You're no bigger than a fly then. But now. How do you want me to carry you? Idiot. Just get as big as a horse or something, Naruto said with a smirk. He knew exactly what buttons to push to make the fox angry at him. I'm not your mount. I'll kick your ass asshole. QB shouted. Naruto chuckled in amusement. The fox was over 1,000 years old, but he fell prey so often to such small provocations. His pride truly knew no bounds. 
I, I, calm down, he said with a smile, and then stood up from his wheelchair. Now standing on his feet, he stretched his stiff back and limbs until he heard a satisfying pop. He was still not at 100%, but that did not mean he was a vegetable. He had used a wheelchair over the past few days mostly to lower the Justice League's guard against him rather than not doing any effort because of Dr. Fate's nagging. Ha! Huh. As I thought, you were pretending. QB shouted triumphantly. But I wasn't. I still feel a bit faint and dizzy when I stand. For example, I can't use wind chakra to fly right now, but I guess that some simple wall dashing is not too much for my current condition. With that, he left the wheelchair by the javelin and jumped high into the air, landing on top of the roof of a smaller building nearby. He made a slow clawing motion over his face with his hand, and a white ANBU-style fox mask appeared. Just as he was getting ready to jump onto another rooftop, a small weight suddenly landed on his shoulder. It was none other than QB. So, you don't want to carry me around, but when I carry you around it's fine, eh? Not this time, B.O.I. Naruto said and grabbed the fox cub by the scruff of his neck and threw him off the building. Naruto. Naruto. QB screamed as he fell. Waha. Naruto laughed out loud and jumped off without a care in the world. He was still in midair, halfway across the distance between the two buildings' rooftops when a furry red appendage wrapped around one of his ankles. His laughter abruptly died in his throat and this time it was his turn to yell. Karama. He hollered as he fell to the ground, dragged down by the fox that had suddenly become as large as a horse like Naruto had asked. One man screaming and one fox laughing, the two of them crashed onto one of the cars parked below, completely flattening it and making alarms blare all around them from the surrounding cars. For a moment, they glared at each other, but then they started barking with laughter. While Kyuubi and Naruto were play-fighting and fooling around like man-children, the situation was completely different on the other side of Metropolis. An eight-feet-tall humanoid monstrosity was destroying everything in its sight. The alien was gray-skinned, extremely muscular and vicious-looking bone spike protruded from his shoulders, arms and head. Wonder Woman arrived in time to see the Justice League fight against him. They're different. If their different costumes were not enough to tip her off, seeing a twin version of herself, her counterpart from the other dimension, was enough to convince her of that. But, as a trained warrior, she also took notice of how well they coordinated with each other as a team. It was not something that she and the other members of the Justice League were capable of. Her first impulse, impulse was to join the fight and help them subdue the monster, but she stopped herself from doing that. She could not exactly put her finger on what was wrong, but Martian Manhunter's telepathic message and the fact that she could not see the Justice League of her dimension was making her wary. They don't look like they need my help anyway. She thought. She decided to take on a wait-and-see approach. Not long after her arrival though, she noticed a masked man with a fox cub on his shoulder appearing on the rooftop, right next to her. Coincidentally, it was also at that moment that the gray-skinned alien started fighting back against the other dimension Justice League even more fiercely than before. He shattered a railway bridge making the Wonder Woman of the other dimension rush to stop the train before it fell off to all the passengers' deaths and then he almost knocked out Hawkgirl with an uppercut and blew up a car's gas tank into Martian Manhunter's face, almost taking him out too. With seemingly endless energy, he also jumped at the black and white costumed Superman and started to slam him against the ground and the walls of the nearby buildings like a ragdoll. Twenty bucks on the ugly guy, QB said, making Naruto chuckle. I bet on the edgy Superman. Kryptonians are tough nuts to crack and this guy isn't a pushover like the other Superman we know. Seeing two identical Amazonian princesses and the rest of the Justice League wearing different costumes, it was not difficult for Naruto to deduce that they were not the Justice League he knew. Wonder Woman frowned when she heard the two of them chit-chatting and making light of the current situation, but she did not comment on it because just then, the monster slammed the black and white costumed Superman so hard that it made a crater in the street below. 
However, despite the violent slam, Superman stood up with no apparent difficulty. What do you want? Want? The other dimension Superman said. The muscular and gray-skinned alien walked towards him slowly, his monstrous physique being seen even more clearly now under the lights coming from a helicopter flying above. Same as you I imagine. The alien's coarse voice rang. Power. Control. But I had to see the best this planet had to offer. I am not impressed. At those words, Superman narrowed his eyes and lunged at him. Boom. A shockwave exploded from the impact of the gray-skinned alien's fist against Superman's face, and it shattered all the glass and windows of the builds and cars 300 feet around them. Damn, that's some serious strength. Naruto whistled impressed. Superman. Diana cried out in distress and was about to jump off from the sidelines and finally join the fight, but two red tails suddenly wrapped around her wrists, stopping her. What's the big idea? Let go of me. She shouted at Kyuubi, but he said seriously. Naruto and I made a bet. The fight is not over yet, so don't butt in. Poo-hoo. Naruto almost burst into laughter, but he quickly masked it with a fake cough. Momentarily, Diana didn't know how to react to how ridiculous that statement was. Don't worry, I'll stop your friend from getting mangled if it comes down to it. At those words, Diana remembered just who exactly the tiny fox had that immobilized her was. Especially feeling the incredible strength in the tails restraining her, she no longer had any doubts about Kyuubi's powers. The muscular alien came to the new crater that Superman had made with his body. You think you can hurt me? He said and his massive foot stomped on Superman's prone body several times, further burying him into the ground. My skin can withstand a nuclear explosion. He grabbed Superman by the neck, raised him in the air and prepared to throw another devas devastating punch. My bones are dash. But just as he was speaking, two beams of red light came from Superman's eyes and hit him right in the forehead. Drool came from the corner of the creature's mouth, and he lost all strength in his limbs, falling to the ground on his knees. QB no longer needed to restrain Diana, because she stopped trying to break free, too startled by what she had just witnessed. Superman had just lobotomized someone in front of so many people. What the hell, you really never lose a bet to you. QB said irritated. Naruto shook his head and admonished. Karama, Karama, have I ever lost a bet? Over a century has passed yet you never learn your lesson. TSK TSK Shame on you. The fox growled unhappily but did not retort. That creature single-handedly almost defeated the Justice League, why are those humans even pointing their backwater crappy guns at him? Tell me, Naruto, why are most humans so stupid? Naruto chuckled at Kyuubi's abrasive words. It did look ridiculous to him too that the policemen were pointing their pistols at the alien creature and then tried to cuff his hands. It was as if they had not just watched how he tanked Green Lantern's power ring blasts without even getting scratched. A huge swarm of reporters popped out seemingly out of nowhere and flocked around the Justice League throwing dozens of questions at the same time. You, lobotomized him. Lois Lane said, her voice betraying her shock. What's your question, Lois? Superman asked curtly. It's Dash, it's so out of character. She added. It's about time if you ask me. One of the nearby journalists said and many others voiced their agreement. That's right. Absolutely. Another one among the reporters asked. And what's with the new costumes, guys? We just felt it was time for a change. The black and white costumes Superman said. Chapter 15 Crisis 3 after the Justice Lords took flight and left the group of reporters behind, Diana suddenly flew in front of them, cutting their way. Where is the rest, rest of the Justice League? 
And what were you thinking? How could you lobotomize someone in front of the whole world? The five Justice Lords members stopped in their flight and looked at each other. It was the other dimension Wonder Woman that replied to her. If you were raised anything like I was, you would be an Amazon. You should be no stranger to the concept of not showing mercy to your enemy. Diana clenched her hands into fists. Even if that was the case, why do it publicly? Turning towards Superman she said, I don't know what is the situation back in your world, but here the Justice League is a symbol of hope. Not of terror. We don't just take the law in our hands to punish whomever we please. Justice Lord Green Lantern retorted. You think we were any different at first? We tried the same route back in our dimension too. Until our Flash was murdered and Luther crawled his way up to become the United States president. Do you know what happened? He triggered World War III. Justice Lord Superman also said. Democracy is nice. But the problem with it is that it doesn't keep you very safe. Too much freedom leads to chaos and chaos leads to war, death and misery. If we hadn't taken control of our dimension with an iron fist, the world would have been destroyed. Do you think hope or honor or honesty are what keep people in line? No. What keeps them in line is fear. I lobotomize that creature in front of the whole world for them to understand that crimes will not be tolerated anymore. For all the villains to learn what fear means. Diana could not help shouting. Do you even hear yourself? How are you any different from Darkseed? He also keeps the peace on all the planets he had conquered. That's not peace. Peace. It's terror. Justice Lord Hawkgirl's mace began crackling with electricity and she said. Batman was right when he said they wouldn't want our kind of help. That they wouldn't understand. Good thing that we've captured the rest already. With no further ado, she lunged at Diana and swung her mace at her wildly. Diana blocked the mace with her wrist guards, but the electricity made her shout from pain and lose control over her flight. She had awakened as a demigoddess, as the daughter of Zeus who was the god of lightning so normal electricity should have not been able to harm her. However, Hawkgirl's mace was made of the nth metal, a metal capable of disrupting all forms of magic. The nth metal was the bane of all magical existences and magic was what protected Diana and gave her supernatural powers. Before Diana could right herself in the air, Green Lantern followed up with a concentrated blast of green light, and then the other dimension Wonder Woman grabbed Diana's arms from the back and locked her in a Nelson hold. Right away, Superman came to the immobilized Diana, and he punched her in the stomach with all his strength, creating a shockwave no smaller than the one that the gray-skinned alien made when he punched him, blasting all the glass windows in the vicinity. Spittle flew out of Diana's mouth and her eyes rolled in the back of her head. Did you have to hit her that hard? The other dimension Wonder Woman said with a frown. I know exactly how tough you are, princess. Your physique is not much below mine. If she was anything like you, she wouldn't stay down unless I used my full strength. Superman justified himself. From the start to finish, the other dimensions Hawk Girl, Green Lantern, Wonder Wonder Woman and Superman's teamwork was completely flawless. With the four of them working together against her, Diana was not given a chance to react in any way. Green Lantern used his power ring to envelop the now unconscious Diana in a bubble of green light, intent on taking her away, but a smoke bomb suddenly exploded in the Justice Lord's midst. Before anyone could make sense of the sudden situation, a massive appendage slammed against Green Lantern, sending him crashing into the ground like a cannonball. It was an enormous crimson red tail. John. Hawk Girl cried out and dived down after him. But when she broke away from the group, a voice came from the side. Futon, vacuum bullets. For bullets made of highly pressurized wind perforated Hawk Girl's feathered wings. Screaming in pain, she crashed into the ground not far from where Green Lantern was lying unconscious. Superman came to his senses immediately, in less than three seconds. However, for a powerful shinobi launching a surprise attack, two seconds were more than enough to reap the life of two unsuspecting people if he desired so, especially while working together with a tailed beast. 
Superman inhaled sharply and then blew out a powerful gale of wind from his lungs scattering the curtain of smoke previously clouding the air. John. Shayera. Superman yelled when he saw the unconscious Green Lantern and Hawkgirl and the blood flowing from her wings. He turned to the attacker with rage in his eyes. Who are you? He shouted. Why did you attack us? Once the smoke was completely scattered, the remaining three members of the Justice Lords, Superman, Wonder Woman, and Martian Manhunter were able to finally see who had attacked them. In front of them, an enormous nine-tailed fox blocked the very wide boulevard below with its sheer size alone, and the tips of his tails rose even higher than the skyscrapers of Metropolis City. The low growl that came from the fox next made their blood almost congeal in their veins. On top of the gigantic crimson red beast, a fox-masked man stood while holding a woman in his arms it was the unconscious Diana. Why did you attack, you attack her? Naruto asked back. A tense silence was instilled as the three still conscious members of the Justice Lords glared at the enormous beast and the masked man standing on top of it. It looks like they want to have a go at it. Karama, prepare some fire for me. Naruto said and laughed coldly. He was too weakened to use complex nature transformation techniques like his raisin shuriken, but regular jutsu were not beyond him. It was QB that was going to provide the main firepower anyway. He put the unconscious Diana down on QB's thick fur, and his hands moved through a series of hand seals so fast that they were almost impossible to discern with the naked eye. Futon, blazing whirlwind. An enormous stream of fire was shot from the bijou's large mouth, and a vortex of pressurized wind was shot from Naruto's mouth as well. According to the Five Elements Rock-Paper-Scissors system, wind was weak against fire because fire fed on wind. But when these two elements were combined, an even more powerful technique would be created. The stream of fire pouring out of Kyuubi's mouth was combined with the vortex of pressurized wind coming from Naruto's lungs, and a terrifying tornado of fire took birth. The thousands of people below watched with trepidation the scene taking place above their city. The vortex of fire made the night sky appear almost as bright as the day. It engulfed the three Justice Lords, completely obscuring their silhouettes from view. The humans below could not see that Superman had tried to blow icy wind from his mouth with all his strength, but his actions were no different than that of a regular person trying to extinguish a conflagration by spitting on it. His Kryptonian powers were greatly restrained by magic. After only a, after only a few seconds, Naruto abruptly clapped his hands, and the terrible wind and fire technique was instantly snuffed out, disappearing like magic. Two silhouettes collapsed to the ground with their skin and clothes burnt up. They were unconscious. The only one still flying was the other dimension Wonder Woman, but she was in no better condition either. She was still standing only due to the magical nature of her abilities offering her a better degree of protection against magical attacks. Even so, she was on her last legs. Naruto's voice came from above Kyuubi's head. Although Wonder Woman was flying at a considerable distance from them, every word spoken by Naruto was heard as well as if they were spoken right into her ears. I don't care about how your dimension is. I don't care what philosophy is right and what is wrong. To me, your squabbles are insignificant. However Dash he said this word with a drawl, when I was at my lowest, the Justice League offered me asylum, and they even nursed me back to health. I owe them a favor. The other dimension Wonder Woman grit her teeth in unwillingness. If you had not attacked us by surprise, do you think you could have gotten one over us? She shouted at him. A deep rumble made the skyscrapers around reverberate when laughter came from the titanic fox's mouth. Naruto chuckled as well at her words. Don't tell me you also want a referee and three judges to score our match the next time we fight? He said in ridicule. What is this, some play fighting exhibition? Saying that, Naruto's and Kyuubi's obnoxious laughter reverberated through the city. Seizing the opportunity to attack is a form of strength as well. You're over 3,000 years old, how have you not learned that even to this day? He said still sniggering. 
Naruto moved his hands and pressurized blades of wind gathered around his body like ribbons. With a flick of his wrist, a ribbon of pressurized wine suddenly slammed into the other dimension Wonder Woman like a whip and hurled her crashing into the ground right next to the rest of the Justice Lords. Aside from her, they were all unconscious. Unconscious. I don't care how you do it, you have four hours to release the Justice League from wherever you're keeping them. Otherwise Dash one of the sharp ribbons of wind dancing around his body suddenly extended to grab the unconscious Justice Lord Superman from the ground and yanked him up your dear leader here will die. The black and white costumed Superman was brought on top of QB's enormous head and thrown down not far from Diana. Remember, Naruto said to the other dimension Wonder Woman, you have four hours. I'll wait for you here, in this city. After saying those words, the enormous fox shrunk down in size and then, the four of them vanished into thin air. It was still the same night, only two hours after the Justice Lords fought against Doomsday and Naruto and Kyuubi that a portal was opened in a side alley, somewhere in Metropolis. Batman, Superman, Martian Manhunter, Flash and Green Lantern, who was holding a slumbering hawk girl stepped out of the portal, returning to their dimension. Thanks to Flash who had managed to stop his heartbeats and fool the other dimension Batman into freeing him from his cuffs, the Justice League managed to escape from their cells. Eventually, Batman convinced his other dimension counterpart to activate the portal and let them come back to their original dimension. They are as strong as we are and just as smart. But they are willing to kill. They will not hold back. We can't win like that. Batman said. What are you saying? That we have to be willing to kill too? Superman shot back outraged. I won't cross that line. Then how else can we stop them? Batman asked. You're the smart one, you figure it out. Superman said. Batman narrowed his eyes in thought. We can't do it. Not unless we cross some kind of line too. But as he said, said those words, he suddenly got an idea. When he looked up, however, he noticed that a strange mood appeared among them. Am I right to guess that you're all thinking about the same thing as I do? Batman asked. Flash grinned. The alien mercenary and his fox, right? He said he owes us a favor. Just the perfect time to cash it in. I hate to admit it, but with his help, Beating back the Justice Lords doesn't seem far-fetched at all. Superman said too. Little did the Justice League know that Naruto had already more than held his end of the bargain. The six of them barely stepped out of the side alley into the main street when the portal that had brought them back before was opened once again. The other dimension Batman came out of the portal hurriedly, and even with the mask covering half of his face the Justice League could sense how distressed he was. Just then, the other dimension Wonder Woman also appeared from the corner of the street, dragging herself by learning on the walls of the buildings. The other dimension Batman ran towards Wonder Woman who stumbled and fell on the ground. He wanted to roll her over, but he hesitated for a moment, he did not even know where to grab her from because her arms and shoulders were covered in burns. Some magician with a giant beast almost killed us all, the other dimension Wonder Woman said with difficulty after Batman rolled her on her back. The members of the Justice League looked at each other sharply at the same time. Naturally, their reactions did not escape the other dimension Batman's eyes. What's she talking about, do you know that guy? He glowered at them. He has captured Superman. If we don't return the Justice League in four hours, he said he'll kill him. Kill him. The other dimension Wonder Woman said. Then, her eyes closed off and she fell into a deep slumber. In her delirium, she had not even noticed the fact the Justice League she had been talking about was standing right next to her. When Justice Lord Superman regained his consciousness, he found himself inside a spaceship. Looking around, he recognized the ship as the javelin used by the Justice Lords. Looks like the Justice League uses the same ships as we do. Despite the familiar surroundings, he was not mistaken by his current situation because his entire body was burning. First and second degree burns were covering his arms and chest, and even parts of his face. 
With his Kryptonian physiology, he could not remember when was the last time he had been hurt as badly as that. But the fox's flames were of a magical nature, and they were even hotter than the sun. He was a magic user. Ugh. A groan came out of his mouth. He hated magic. You're awake so quickly even after an attack like that? Hearing that voice, his body stiffened. Following the sound, he saw a man wearing a white fox mask and a dark combat suit partially covered by a fur-collared cloak kneeling next to Diana, who was lying unconscious on the floor of the ship. Justice Lord Superman instinctively tried to jump up to his feet and lunge at him, but the moment he moved, an arc of electricity zapped him, and his body shook uncontrollably while he cried in agonizing pain. A chuckle came from the masked man, but he did not even deign him with a glance. His hands became coated in a cyan light, and he placed them on top of Diana's chest. The mystical palm technique was the bread and butter of any medic shinobi in his homeworld. It was not exceedingly difficult, but it was required for one to have a nigh-perfect chakra control in order to cast it. In his current condition, Naruto needed to focus more than usual to cast it properly. What did you do to me? Justice Lord Superman asked through gnashed teeth. It was QB, QB that answered him. He was now back to his tiny form a little fox. Where I came from, it was called Fuinjutsu. Nasty shit, I'm telling you. Even I got marked by Fuinjutsu at some point in the past. In this world, people call it magic but it's the same thing. So, pipe down and don't make a move unless you want your ass roasted. Ha ha. Superman watched for a few moments how Naruto continued to heal Diana, but there were dozens of questions in his mind. What happened to the others? And why did you capture me? What are you planning? The more he spoke, the angrier he became and he unconsciously tried to move once more, only to be electrocuted and made to scream in agony again. QB snickered like a hyena at the sight of his suffering. Stupid. Are you a masochist? Naruto's control over his mystical palm technique was broken when he snorted with laughter. Don't make me laugh, Karama, or I can't focus. And you there, shut your pie hole. No one is dead, I only took you hostage until your pals released the rest of the Justice League. He said to Justice Lord Superman. After that, he knelt on the floor and went back to healing Diana. He's gonna kill you, you know? QB said snidely and snickered. If your friends don't release the Justice League in two hours, he he, you're as good as dead. Naruto stopped his mystical palm technique again. Karama, I swear to the void. Luckily for Naruto, he was wearing his mask or otherwise QB would have seen the traitorous grin on his face in spite of his different words. Though Naruto wanted to concentrate on healing Diana, QB was making it very hard for him to focus. It always cracked him up to see the fox toying with his prey. Oh, come on, what's the fun in that? Don't worry about your princess, she's fine. QB exhorted. What your, she's not my princess. This dickhead hit her so hard that you'd think he was trying to kill her. I owe the Justice League a favor so I'm just making making sure that she is fine. Nothing more than that? The fox said, his voice dripping with all kinds of insinuations. Nothing more. Naruto bit out. QB chortled at his overreaction, but he didn't press the issue. Now that it was silence again, Naruto went back to channeling the mystic palm technique. You know, I've never eaten a Kryptonian before. I wonder how they taste like. QB said after a while. Naruto stood up in annoyance. All right, that's it. He said and grabbed QB by the scruff of his neck like one would grab a naughty cat and threw him out of the javelin. He was about to start casting the healing technique again, but he could not help stopping in his tracks when a massive head appeared on the front window of the ship. QB had grown very large and pressed his huge head against the window of the cockpit, staring at Justice Lord Superman unblinkingly and licking his whiskers in a hungry fashion. Naruto finally gave up. He burst into laughter. Chapter 16 Justice League Unlimited
his hands coated in a cyan light, and with beads of sweat appearing on his forehead, Naruto focused on speeding up Wonder Woman's recovery. Even so, he could not help letting his eyes roam over her face. Long and silky-looking raven-black locks of hair, unblemished pale white skin, a pair of supple eyebrows, a cute and small nose, symmetrical and defined cheekbones, an oval face, and a pair of luscious, plush and naturally red lips. Naruto felt his pulse speed up when he looked at her. No doubt, she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Feeling his chakra flow slipping out of his control, he closed his eyes and shook his head to, dis to dispel the distracting effect that her flawless beauty had on him. Resolutely, he refused to look at her face anymore and chose instead to keep his eyes locked on his hands or else he would not be able to maintain his mystic palm technique. But that proved to be no good either because after two minutes he got bored and his eyes unwittingly jumped to what could be seen beyond his hovering hands. H. Huge was the only thing he could think about. Before he could stop himself, his cyan chakra-coated hands lowered and lightly pressed against the large mounds of flesh below. The soft but springy sensation coming from his palms when he touched her peaks was like a small electric shock for his body. But it lasted only for a second because he quickly lifted his hands up and turned his head away, closing his eyes tightly. When he opened his eyes, however, he noticed to his horror that the giant fox pressing his huge head against the window of the ship had seen everything that he had done. It's over. Ah, I want to die. Karama will never let me live it down. He was not allowed the luxury to even wallow in his own inner misery and prepare his heart for the aftermath, because at that moment, a strangely sensual voice in his distorted point of view came from the woman lying below. NNG, why were you touching my chest? Naruto froze, even the chakra flow to his hands halted, and the mystic palm technique stopped. Three infinitely long seconds passed, with Naruto just staring at her stupidly, momentarily not knowing what to say. He dressed his voice awkwardly. I was, uh, healing you. A sound between a scoff and a chuckle came from the fox outside the ship. That's not how the mystic palm technique works. You don't need direct contact. You just wanted to feel up her big milkers and dash. Karama, you shut your trap. Naruto hollered. Understanding what was going on, a hue of pink appeared in Diana's normally pale cheeks. I am exhausted and far from being in my best state. It was an accident. QB, QB returned to a smaller size and rushed back inside the ship very quickly, not wanting to miss out on even one second of fun. So, you switched from I was healing her to it was an accident? Wahahaha. He mock imitated Naruto's voice and then barked with laughter. As if they could read each other's mind, in the next moment, a human sized fox and a man lunged at each other at the same time. It was a full on brawl. The two of them started rolling on the ground and clobbering each other with punches, trying to strangle the other with their hands or tails, and even trying to bite each other in a mess of tails and limbs while Diana and Justice Lord Superman watched them with a blank look on their faces. Normally, this kind of brawls ended up with Naruto getting the upper hand due to his superior hand to hand combat skills, but this time it was a completely different story. Huffing and breathing out heavily, Naruto was eventually thrown flat-faced on the floor, sprawled on his stomach, while the human-sized nine-tailed fox plopped himself heavily with his butt on his back. Triumphant laughter came from the fox. Wahaha! I win. Now say it. Say it. Piece of shit. Naruto cursed under his breath. At his words, QB's size increased, suddenly becoming 400 pounds heavier. I give. I give up. Naruto cried out breathlessly. Then say it. Kyuubi said with a gloating voice. Karama, Sama. Kyuubi's size increased once again and Naruto started tapping on the floor with his hand like the loser tapping out in a wrestling match. Arg. Gare off me you fat fuck, you're gonna crush my spine. The huge fox brought a hand to one of his large, rabbit-like ears and sing-sang. I can't hear you. Karama-sama. 
When Naruto finally yelled those words, an expression, as if he had just attained nirvana, and ascended to heaven appeared on Kyuubi's face. Face. Brawling against each other without using any kind of ability or chakra reinforcement technique was almost like a tradition for Naruto and Kyuubi. They only used their physical strength and Kyuubi adopted a size similar to Naruto. Whoever lost had to call the winner master and obey his commands for a week. It was how they solved their issues and let out some steam. Usually, it ended either in a tie or with QB outright losing because Naruto's physical strength was not any lower than his while his fighting IQ was leagues beyond that of the Bijou. QB could count on the claws of one paw the number of times he had won against Naruto over the past almost 10 years. It went without saying how frustrating that was. This time, however, by taking advantage of Naruto's weakness, the fox won. His elation was beyond words. Justice Lord Superman was lying completely still on the floor with a seal painted on his forehead and Diana was similarly sitting on the floor, while watching in stupefaction how the giant fox was crushing a screaming Naruto under the weight of his massive, but that was the scene on which the Justice League and the other dimension Batman stumbled upon when they finally found the javelin. Witnessing the huge fox tormenting Naruto, an incredulous voice came from the other dimension Batman. That is the guy that crushed the Justice Lords? Ha I'm so tired. Naruto complained, now needing to sit and rest in his wheelchair for real. I was still recovering, but I was forced to use so much energy to fight the Justice Lords, and then to heal both Hawk Girl and Wonder Woman. Ah, whatever shall I do? Only Raman can save me now. At least 49 bowls of it. A soft hand grabbed him by one ear and twisted it slightly, enough to make him uncomfortable, but not enough to cause him pain. He heard Diana's threatening voice coming from behind. Don't think that playing the victim will make me forget what you did. Naruto suddenly stopped his whining and became as silent as a grave making both Diana and the fox on his shoulder giggle at his meek reaction. Reaction. Deciding to figuratively pour salt on the open wound, QB said. Listen up, slave. Lightning Raisingan. Now. Naruto burst with indignation. You asshole, I'm seriously weak now. I can't expend more chakra. Raisin gans are too hard to make when I'm like this. He yelled at him. QB laughed uncaringly. For all I know, you could be faking it again. You pretended you needed a wheelchair for almost a week when you could walk around just fine. So gimme my lightning raisin gan now. Remember, you're my slave for a week. You don't want to go back on your word, do you? Unless you want me to start talking about stuff? I'm sure that certain people would love to hear more about it. Naruto did not need to have eyes in the back of his head to feel that Diana, who was standing behind his wheelchair suddenly made a very interested face at Kyuubi's words. He ground his teeth in unwillingness, but he raised his hand in defeat. A spiraling sphere of blue energy took shape in his palm and yellow arcs of lightning started to dance on its surface once he added lightning nature chakra to it too. Not waiting for an invitation, the tiny fox stuck out his small tongue and licked at the sphere of lightning chakra. An electric current coursed through him and the crimson red fur all over his body stood straight like needles, but Kyuubi let out an excited sound of delight and started taking small but quick bites off the lightning raisin gan. He had traveled the universe from one corner to the other alongside Naruto, and he had eaten countless types of dishes and the raw meat of countless creatures. However, nothing had ever come close to tasting as good to Kyuubi as Naruto's chakra. It was the ultimate delicacy. From behind, Diana was giggling silently to herself as she watched the interaction interactions between the two of them. She was especially amused at how the fox cub's previously fluffy nine tails looked like a hacksaw now, but he still continued to eat the electrifying treat with gusto. The other members of the Justice League that were in the javelin were looking curiously at them, especially at Wonder Woman who was acting completely different compared to how angry and frustrated she had been a few hours before. Since when did she become so chummy with the two of them? Flash asked Green Lantern and Hawk Girl who were sitting next to him. Something must have happened while we were captured. But the fox liked her from the beginning, so I'm not that surprised. 
What I'm surprised about is the mercenary allowing the princess to pull on his ear like that and not saying anything back. Hawk Girl replied. If only the Guardians could see now who they classified as universal level threats. Green Lantern trailed off, making Flash and Hawk Girl laugh. Meanwhile, Superman and Martian Manhunter were standing close to Batman, who was piloting the Javelin. Currently, they were heading back to the Watchtower. Can't say I'm not happy how easily we got rid of the Justice Lords. I expected a lot more struggle. Superman said. It looks like the mercenary really is a man of his word. He returned the favor he owed us without us asking him to do it. Martian Manhunter said and glanced back the masked Naruto, who was sitting in his wheelchair and feeding QB a ball of lightning energy. Superman nodded in agreement. True. And he helped Hawk Girl recover as well. By all means, she was in a hospital before that. 1. After Naruto had confirmed that the Justice League was fine, he let go of Justice Lord Superman and freed him from the effect of his painful Fuenjutsu. Then, the other dimension Batman took the rest of the Justice Lords and left, going back to their dimension. Now, the Justice League together with Naruto and Kyuubi were returning to the Watchtower. What's on your mind, Batman? Superman asked when he saw him being silent. Wonder Woman looks different from earlier today, so I'm thinking that Dashi said. Oh ho, are you perhaps jealous? Superman cut in and joked. The only answer he got was a blank stare. The Gotham vigilante was not impressed. Right, who am I kidding? There's no space for human emotions in that broody heart of yours. The Man of Steel said. I was thinking that it's time we started our plans. Now that Wonder Woman seems to be back to normal, all seven of us can finally make decisions together. Batman continued in his usual tone. The Justice League did not have a ruler per se. They were a team and everyone's opinion held equal value in the eyes of the others when it came to making important decisions. Because of Wonder Woman's previous emotional instability and absent-minded behavior, the six of them had been putting off their plans for the past three weeks the plans of expanding the Justice League. That was a very important matter and they had not wanted to leave Wonder Woman out of it. A few days later, all seven members of the Justice League were gathered together in the Watchtower. They were sitting at a table, except for Superman who was standing on his feet. Since we all agree that the Justice League has to expand, we need to understand the consequences of that. First of all, the United Nations will not like it, not one bit. We can expect that among the heroes that we recruit, there could also be moles from the government or from the United Nations too. Because of that, we need to be certain that we can trust each other. With everything. Realizing what Superman's words alluded to, Flash said a bit flustered. Hold on a second here. What about the whole secret identity thing? I mean, I trust you guys, but I'm not sure I'm ready to expose myself yet. You do realize that Batman and Superman already know everyone's identities, right? Probably John knows it too. Moreover, the princess and I don't have a secret identity, and Hawkgirl can't exactly disguise herself with her wings either. Green Lantern said. While they were talking, Batman was the first to take the initiative and pulled off his mask. I'm Bruce Wayne. Superman also took a pair of round glasses from somewhere and put them on his eyes. I'm Clark Kent. Show off. Flash mumbled and sagged his shoulders when he heard who exactly Batman was. I'm Wally West, he said and took off his mask too. Red hair. It suits you. Wonder Woman who sat next to him said with a smile and playfully rubbed the top of his head. Flash perked up at her words. You think? He asked in a voice that betrayed how happy he felt at her compliment. Everyone knew who Green Lantern was Jon Stewart, and that was the same for Martian Manhunter and Wonder Woman. The three of them had never made an attempt at hiding their identities. Everyone turned to look at Hawkgirl who was the only one who had not taken off her mask. She was looking down, as though she was thinking intensely about something. Before I tell you who I really am, 
I ask you to please listen and not interrupt me until the end. Noticing her unusual seriousness, the others piped down and focused their attention on her. Hawk Girl took off her bird mask and said, My name is Shayara Hole. I am a lieutenant and an espionage instructor in the Thanagrian Intergalactic Army. Despite her request to not be interrupted, Jon Stewart cried out. You mean to say that you are a spy? Similarly, Superman and Wonder Woman stood up and looked at her with serious eyes. Care to explain what exactly do you mean by that? Green Lantern pressed on. Hawk Girl continued without flinching back at his reaction. As a Green Lantern, you should know about the intergalactic war between the Thanagarian and Gordanian empires. It's been going on for generations. Everywhere the Gordanians pass by, they leave only death and destruction in their wake. They kill everyone that opposes them and enslave and sell the ones that surrender. The Thanagarians are the only thing that stops them from taking over the entire galaxy. The reason why Earth, which is so close, at only 25 light years away from the Vega star system, had not been invaded by the Gordanians yet, is the Thanagarian fleet holding them back. Green Lantern calmed down at her words and stood silent, listening to what she had to say. However, over the past few decades, the Gordanians' incursions have grown fiercer, and their technology advanced in leaps and bounds due to the increasingly growing support of their old allies, the Psions. As of late, we started to lose ground. We predicted that the Earth would soon be faced with their invasion. Coming here, my mission was to ascertain the planet's defenses and become familiar with the natives' culture and customs in order for the Thanagarian army to more easily establish a military base here and halt the Gordanians' advance. To prevent the Earth from being destroyed. A silence that one could hear a pin drop was instilled in the conference room of the watchtower. You spoke of your mission using the past. Did something change or am I reading too much into it? The ever-perceptive Batman asked. Hawk Girl confirmed his thoughts. Two days ago, I received a transmission from my commander. My orders have changed. I am to return to Thanagar. I did not know how to break the news to you because they were so sudden, but now it looked like the perfect opportunity. When her words finally sank in, multiple issues dawned on the others. You have to leave? Then, what about us? Green Lantern asked. Green Lantern and Hawk Girl had never spoken outright about their relationship with the rest of the Justice League, but the others were not clueless. They had long since discovered the growing affection between the two of them. They were not surprised by his question. Shayara Hull made a conflicted expression and sighed. I am military. I cannot ignore the orders I have been given. You are a soldier too, John, you should know that. Martian Manhunter spoke from the side. Then what about Earth? Have the Thanagarians given up on our planet and left us to fend for ourselves? We can't possibly stop an intergalactic empire's army alone. The problem brought forth by the Martian alarmed the others too. That's not the case anymore. The mercenary caterpillar annihilated the Psion race. Furthermore, the Gordanians have still not recovered from the shock of losing their allies like that. Our intel says that over the past three weeks that passed since the Psion's destruction, almost one million Gordanians have run away from their planet, Karna, terrified at the possibility of the mercenary coming to kill them too. The number of Gordanians deserting the army is increasing on a daily basis too. Currently, the Gordanians' ranks are in disarray. The Thanagarian army has already started winning battles on multiple fronts. Without the backing of the Psions, and with the Gordanians shivering in their boots in fear of Caterpillar's retribution, they can no longer hold their own against our troops. Their defeat is only a matter of time. We will finally win this war. The other six in the room were once more reminded of just who was the one living with them in the watchtower. Watching the easy-going attitude of the mercenary as he bantered with his fox every day, they almost forgot how the two of them had destroyed a planet and how many beings they had killed only three weeks ago. Hawk Girl's words reminded them how terrifying the alien mercenary and his planet-busting fox were terrifying enough to even influence the course of a generation-long war between two intergalactic empires. 
When I came to this planet, my intention was to just keep a professional, a professional distance from everyone. After all, despite the Thanagarian's good intentions, I was still a spy. I could never be here with you forever. I knew that when the time came, both I and the people I got close to would suffer. I knew that I will have to leave you behind someday, but I could not help becoming close to you. As she spoke those words her voice became shaky. However, she was a tough woman and she did not cry. Seeing as I will not be able to continue living on earth due to my orders, I should not take part in deciding the Justice League's future course of events. In fact, I will be leaving for Thanagar today. I have already packed all my belongings. Saying that, she stood up from her chair and left the room. Shayera. John Stewart called out and rushed out of the room after her too. The Justice League's meeting was unexpectedly interrupted by Hawkgirl's revelations and her decision to leave the Earth right away. However, after Hawkgirl's abrupt and swift departure, the remaining six came back to the conference room. John, do you want us to postpone this to a later date? Superman asked in a tone of understanding. Don't mind me. Green Lantern said. Though he looked more taciturn than ever, his expression was composed. Personal matters can't come before Justice League business. As Shayara said, I was a soldier too, I understand her decision. She can't disobey the orders coming from above. Super Superman nodded in acknowledgement and dressed his voice. Though Hawkgirl leaving us is unfortunate, there is nothing we can do about it. We have to move on and work harder in order to protect our planet. And now that we know each other's identities, it's time we discuss another very important issue, funding. Not only we will need a much bigger headquarters, which will cost us dozens of millions we will need more spaceships, specialized equipment and many other facilities, enough to accommodate dozens or maybe hundreds of heroes. Batman said. As Bruce Wayne, I am a billionaire. However, I can't support all the costs by myself. Not because I can't afford it, but because such a large sum of money disappearing at once without an explanation would attract too much attention and possibly expose the fact that I'm somehow connected to the Justice League. The government is most likely paying very close attention to all the wealthy people since they know that the Justice League would not be able to operate without serious financial backing. Flash said. To be honest, I don't see of how much help we could be. I'm just a forensic scientist at the Central City Police Department, John is a retired soldier, Wonder Woman is an exiled princess and Martian Manhunter has no worldly possessions. We aren't poor, of course, but we are not rich either. What about Aquaman, have you tried to contact him? He's the king of Atlantis, he's probably even wealthier than I am if we were to count all the sunken treasures at the bottom of the oceans, treasures that only he has access to. He doesn't have to justify his expenses to anyone either. Batman suggested. That's a great idea. We just have to see how we can convince him to support us. I will go talk to him myself. Superman offered. I can also provide the Justice League with highly advanced technology from Krypton, and even money if it comes down to it. Over the years, I've gathered many valuable things in my Fortress of Solitude. As Clark Kent I may not be a millionaire, but as Superman, I could always get some rare space materials that NASA or other interested parties would be will willing to spend a fortune for. I will get into contact with Green Arrow and see if he can support us as well. Batman said. The others made a confused face. They had not heard about that name until then. He's a small, local vigilante operating in Star City. I can't tell you his identity without his approval first, but I can tell you that he is just as rich as Batman. Superman explained. Martian Manhunter who had been silent until then spoke. I have been contacted by a very wealthy man named Maxwell Lord two weeks ago too, only a few days after our clash against Uzumaki Naruto in Jump City. It was not long after Superman suggested to expand the Justice League. Maxwell Lord offered to support the Justice League financially but hearing the way Martian Manhunter trailed off made the others curious. But what? Is there an issue with his character? Wonder Woman asked. 
I do not know. Martian Manhunter said. What do you mean? Batman asked. I could not read his mind. He is a telepath, just like me. Bruce Wayne made a thinking posture. I know Maxwell Lord. He's the head of Chimtech Consortium, one of the wealthiest men in the world. A rather unscrupulous businessman, but nobody ever gets that rich by playing nice against the competition. Still, as far as I know, he has not broken any laws yet. He is not cited with the government either, he's rather infamous for often butting heads with them. Flash said. I don't find it weird that a billionaire would offer to support us. I mean people aren't blind, they see what we have gone through to protect everyone, Darkseed attacked the Earth a few years ago, Imperium and his race almost took over the planet about a year and a half ago, and then there was the Gordanian ship threatening to destroy Jump City a few weeks ago too. Green Lantern nodded in agreement. True. If Maxwell Lord wants to support us, I say we go for it. We need all the help we can get. The six of them continued to discuss various matters related to the Justice League's future, but, at some point, the alarms of the watchtower started to blare. Flash was the first to arrive in the control room, just in time to see a live footage captured by one of the remote cameras placed on one of the many Justice League-owned satellites orbiting the Earth, a very large and muscular gray-skinned man with shaggy and long black hair and a horseshoe mustache was approaching the Earth while riding a space bike. He was dressed in leather clothes and a very thick chain was wrapped around his forearm while the other end of it was tied to a large, human-sized metallic box which he dragged after the bike making sure to keep it right after the engines, seemingly with the clear intent of heating it up. When Superman arrived in the control room as well and saw the appearance of the alien detected by the watchtower, he frowned. Lobo? What is he doing here? That's it for this reading. Hit like and subscribe for a free ticket pass going to the different worlds of anime fanfictions. Looking forward to having you on board again.